So in this video, I'm going to be discussing creatine. What's the optimal amount of creatine to take? When's the best time to take it? And how do you get it from the diet? So creatine is made up of three amino acids. It's made up of glycine, arginine, and methionine. So a lot of people aren't synthesizing creatine well because they're not getting enough glycine in the diet. So actually increasing your glycine intake will improve your body's ability to make creatine. On the flip side, taking creatine or getting creatine from the diet is actually going to provide you with glycine as well. So just keep that in mind. Now creatine's main function in the body is to actually recycle ATP, okay? So it's actually improving basically energy in the body, um, particularly in the skeletal muscle, but also in the brain. So a lot of the benefits of creatine um, have to do with improving like lean tissue mass, improving strength, because it's literally providing you more energy during your workouts, but also it has cognitive benefits um, because it's improving uh, basically the recycling of energy in the brain as well. So there have been studies showing that creatine improves you know, working memory, cognition, particularly in vegetarians, and then that it also improves basically lean tissue mass gain and strength. Now, creatine is definitely one of the most studied supplements. It's been studied for over 50 years, so we know it works really well. But we're probably underdosing it. Most people aren't taking it at the correct time. And then from a dietary perspective, um, I'll teach you guys some tips on how to improve uh, creatine intake. So when it comes to dosing creatine, we're probably underdosing creatine. Um, an optimal intake is probably somewhere around 0.1 grams per kilogram of body weight. So really creatine uh, shouldn't just be given at like, let's say three or five grams. It really depends on not just the person's body weight, but their lean tissue mass, like how muscular they are. So we should actually really be dosing creatine based on muscle mass, but um, the studies really just usually go off body mass. So 0.1 grams per kilogram of body weight. So if someone weighs 70 kilograms, then they probably should be consuming around seven grams of creatine to get an optimal benefit. Now, how do you optimize creatine timing wise? A lot of people will say, well, it doesn't matter like the timing uh, of creatine. Well, two studies, Antonio 2013 and Candau 2015, both compared pre-exercise creatine to post-exercise creatine. And the post-exercise creatine was better in regards to improving body composition, improving lean mass gain, and improving strength. So taking creatine post-exercise does seem to be better than pre-exercise. Now, if you can't take it for some reason post-exercise, taking creatine close to the time of exercise increases creatine phosphate stores in the muscle by sevenfold versus not taking it close to exercise. So the, so the biggest thing is to take creatine close to exercise, ideally post-exercise. And if you wanna actually enhance the creatine phosphate stores in the muscle by 50 to 100%, then actually taking that creatine with carbohydrates and protein will improve um, the storage of the creatine phosphate as well because carbs and protein will spike insulin, which will help drive creatine into the muscle. So that will increase creatine phosphate stores by 50 to 100% simply by taking it with carbohydrates and protein, okay? So somewhere around like 50 grams of carbs, 20, 20 to 40 grams of protein will help spike the insulin and help drive creatine into the skeletal muscle and improve its benefits. Now, when it comes to diet, yes, we get creatine from red meat, but there are studies suggesting that if you are cooking your meat to, to the point that it's well done, you essentially may not be getting any creatine. So if you're not seeing some pink in the meat, then we can assume, we should probably err on the side of caution and assume that you're not getting very much uh, creatine from meat. So if you wanna enhance your creatine uptake and intake, then not overcooking meat is one way to do that. So red meat, um, you know, around a pound of, let's say, like like a medium cooked uh, steak, one pound of that may give you two grams of creatine, one and a half to two grams of creatine. Um, but if you start cooking that steak to um, medium well or well done, it'll be much less than that. So you can get creatine from red meat, but just know that the more you cook it, the less creatine you're going to be ingesting. Now, in regards to creatine supplements, the two most common are creatine monohydrate and creatine HCL. The HCL is much more expensive. The monohydrate is much more studied. However, the HCL 
some people do seem to get some bloating with the monohydrate. So a quick easy way around that is to actually just take a smaller dose of that creatine. Um, so let's say instead of taking five to seven grams all at once, maybe only taking two or three, that can help some of the bloating. However, if that doesn't work, then some people do tolerate the creatine HCL better.